Hi, everybody. Maria and I have been talking about preparing for the next session, and I've come up with this YouTube video on putting it all together for you all to prepare for the next session. So here we go. OK, so these are FAP's five rules. And I've gone over them a few times. Rule one is observe CRBs. Rule two is evoke CRBs. Rule three is reinforce CRBs. Rule four, observe your effects on the client. Observe the effects of your behavior on the client. And then rule five, generalize what's happening in session to out of session. And most of the work we've been doing together has really been about rules one, two, and three. And even though I haven't used this terminology too often, I'm hoping that you all have a, like a felt and experiential sense of what that work looks like because we've been doing it over and over again uh, with each other. So what I'd like to do now is walk you through this handout uh, called Putting It All Together, which I've attached as a PDF to the email. Um, and what I have here are a bunch of slides that walk through exactly what's in the handout. Let me put it on slideshow to make this a little easier. So here we go. Rule one is really about awareness. And so imagine you're the therapist working with this particular client and the client is talking about some stuff that clients talk about. In this case, the client is talking about some childhood experiences uh, and he says, when I was 12, my mother got sick. Um, and then he says, I have never been able to express how I really feel to women. It feels too scary. Now, the point of this example is that the client is just talking about stuff in his life or her life, whoever the client may be. And there really could be anything that the client is talking about, stuff going on in their daily lives. And as you're having this talk with the client, you are doing rule one which is observing CRBs, looking for CRBs. Um, so here's our definition of rule one. You're looking for CRBs in the therapy process. You're paying exquisite attention, exquisite awareness to the direct, live, present moment experience and behavior of the client. As per your case conceptualization, no matter what the content of the discussion is about. So as we're talking, you're always looking for CRB1s, CRB2s. Okay, so in this case, we're just making up a case conceptualization, but in this case, let me move my picture out of the way so you can see the whole slide. The therapist is recognizing, as he is talking to me, he is a little more vulnerable. He's not super vulnerable, he could be more vulnerable, but he's definitely showing some vulnerability to me. So this is sort of what the therapist is thinking consistent with rule one. And she notices that this expression of vulnerability in our model, this would be kind of a vulnerable emotional expression or self-disclosure. Uh, and that would be a CRB too. And even though it's small, that's perfect. We wanna be looking for small improvements in our client's behavior. So she's noticing that he's engaging in a small CRB two in this moment. And this is rule one, she's just noticing the CRB two. Um, another way of talking about this as you go from rule one, which is just noticing the CRB2, to rule two, which is now directly evoking the CRB2, is that you're switching from the therapy content to the therapy process. In other words, the content is that he's talking about a situation with his mother and how he has difficulty expressing himself to women. And the process is that he's talking to you right now, a woman, and he's expressing himself. Okay, so you've noticed the CRB2, rule two, maps onto what we've been talking about is courage, and now you want to evoke the CRB2 even more. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be linear in this way, um, but we're just sort of describing it in this linear fashion to make it easier for training. So here's our definition of rule two. Move myself out of the way again. You're inviting the client to engage in CRB2. You're being direct and focusing on the client's live present moment experience. So for example, you might say something like, 
I would like to know more about that. In other words, I would like to know more about how you have difficulty expressing yourself to women. What's hard for you to tell me right now? So that's a pretty direct evoke, right? And that's the kind of thing that I think takes courage that we've been working on a lot in our group together. So hopefully this all feels consistent with our experiences. Um, so he responds to the evoke because he's my perfect client for this demonstration with another CRB2. And he says, it's even harder for me to say, and then he says something hard, which I didn't put in the slide, but I think you get the idea. So he's now engaging in more CRB2. You can choose to keep evoking. In response to the CRB2, you can invite the client to go even deeper. So you might say something like, can you let yourself show even more emotions as you tell this story? Um, and because he's our perfect client for the sake of this demonstration, he does so. He doesn't avoid or all the things that our difficult clients do. And he says, yeah, well, I feel really shaky when I tell you this. And then he shares something else. So again, I'm giving you sort of an idealized interaction here for the sake of this demonstration. So you notice this as an even bigger CRB2. Now, one of my favorite ways to evoke CRB2s is to essentially tell them what my reinforcement will be. Um, authentically express that loving reinforcement is available. And so in the spirit of that, you might say something like, I want you to know that I am feeling totally accepting and open to you right now. Now, notice how in this example, the CRB that we're working on is really emotional expression and providing safety. And hopefully you're recognizing this response as something that would hopefully provide safety. Safety is available. Okay, that's rule two. And the client gives an even bigger CRB2. Thank you. This is really hard for me to say. And then gives a bigger CRB2. Okay, so now let's talk about reinforcement. This is what we've been working on most of the time. This is rule three. This maps onto love. Um, and your goal is to naturally reinforce CRB2s. So here are four tips for naturally reinforcing CRB2s. The first one is ensure you have the client's attention. Sometimes it depends on the nature of the client and the CRB2, but sometimes if the client's really engaging in CRB2, they're feeling very emotional. We all know what this is like when we've been doing our small exercises with each other and revealing personal things to each other. We can get really flooded with our emotions or overwhelmed or slightly dysregulated. And when we're like that, it's actually hard, as we know, to receive feedback. So we want to be paying attention and being sensitive to that. So ensuring you have the client's attention, you may something like, are you with me right now? Would you like some feedback from me? We're doing other things to check if the client is really able to receive feedback. We want this feedback to be as powerful as possible. Tip number two, point out even the smallest improvements in behavioral language. This is known as shaping. Um, and we could have stopped after his very first CRB2 without doing all of this additional evoking for the sake of the example and just gone straight to rule three. Um, but you might say something like, I want you to know I can really see you, your vulnerability. It is beautiful to me. Um, you may feel uncomfortable saying that as a therapist and we could talk about that, but this example is meant to be provocative in that way. Okay, tip number three. Engage natural reinforcement. Now, what do I mean by natural reinforcement? I mean, follow the model that we've been working on. To me, if you see a client expressing emotion, then our model suggests that what's naturally reinforcing is providing safety. If you observe your client self-disclosing, then our model suggests that what's naturally reinforcing is being validating. And if you see your client engaging in CRB2s related to asking for something specific, then our model suggests your job is to give them something specific. And so the model helps you locate what's natural. Natural in this example doesn't necessarily mean do what you are naturally feeling. Natural means do what ideally is expected to be the natural reinforcer in the client's life, which may or may not be what you're feeling. Okay, so in this example, the therapist says, you are 100% safe, accepted, and seen by me in this moment. The therapist recognizes the vulnerability, and this is hopefully a naturally reinforcing response. Okay, tip number four, 
involve yourself personally, authentically, and vulnerably in the response. And we talked a lot about this as well in our, in our work together. And this takes courage. In this example, the therapist says, to me, when you share yourself in this vulnerable way with me, a woman, knowing what has happened in your life, knowing that you have difficulty expressing to women, this is what life is all about to me. Personally, I never had people trust me enough to share with me when I was younger, and I am so full of appreciation for you right now. Now, in this example, I purposefully had the therapist self-disclosing something personal back to the client to simply provoke a discussion. Is this appropriate? Should you do it? Should you not? The point I want to make is I want to be pushing people in this direction and considering really involving yourself authentically, strategically. Okay, that's rule three. Now, rule four. Check on your attempt at reinforcement. So the idea is if things are going really well in FAP and your client's engaging in CRB2s and you're responding with rule three, then you can actually have a really beautiful interaction with your client and it can go on for several turns. It can go on for a while. That really is the emotional core of FAP, rules one, two, and three. Rules four and five sort of come afterwards. And honestly, if you jump to rules four and five too quickly, it may be an indicator that you're actually avoiding the intensity or the intimacy of the interaction yourself as a therapist. Rule four could happen in the session bridging. It could happen the following week. It could happen at the end of the session. But I'm just suggesting be careful about cutting off uh, CRB2 rule three exchange, a reinforcing exchange uh, in the service of rule four prematurely. Okay, nonetheless, when it's appropriate, rule four. Is what you're doing working? The easiest way to do rule four is to simply ask, how are you reacting to what I'm saying? Or some version of that question, just getting feedback from your client. How is this going for you? Am I being reinforcing? Is this working? Um, our ideal client is gonna give the perfect response. He says, yeah, it means a lot to me. I feel accepted by you. Okay. There's more to talk about rule four, but to keep it simple, I'm going to move on. The final rule is rule five. And now this is about taking what happened between you and the client and helping it happen more in the client's life. In other words, promoting generalization. A couple tips for promoting generalization. Tip number one, you should discuss and summarize the interaction. What has the client learned? What is the takeaway? I could talk about this in more traditional FAP terms like CRB3s if you're interested, but I'm not gonna do that right now. The important point is, let's talk about what just happened. What is the takeaway? And again, this could be at the end of the session, it could be the next session, you don't wanna rush into it in my opinion. So, you could say, how does what we just did, what happened between us, fit your therapy goals? Can you summarize our interaction for me? And I don't have a client response here because I don't have room on the slide, but let's assume the client now does some work trying to summarize the interaction. Tip number two for rule five is relating specifically what happened between you and the client to other relationships and contacts. So you might say something like, okay, now that this has gone well between you and I, with whom can you do more of this in your life? Um, and really talking about specifically where can you do this with others? And then the final rule five tip is to be a good behavior therapist um, and develop really concrete action plans and assignments for doing this. Now, of course, this is where our risk logs have shown up. We've done the work in session, and then the risk logs have been our attempt to get you doing more of this stuff in, in your lives. So the risk logs are all in the service of rule five and generalization. And if you have time to be a good behavior therapist, I would encourage you to be as concrete as you can about this, real homework assignments. Let's come up with a plan for when you're going to talk to your sister or talk to your roommate or whoever you decided to talk to. You're gonna do this tomorrow, when are you gonna do it? Where, how, getting really behaviorally specific like a good behavioral homework assignment. Okay, looks like you're all seeing that my meeting with Catherine is coming up in a few minutes, so let me close that. Okay, so those are the five rules and you have a handout which summarizes all of this. On Tuesday, um, we will hopefully have time for, not all of you, because everything always takes longer, 
but a couple of volunteers who will now offer a client conceptualization, just like we've been doing with ourselves, um, behaviorally specific. In other words, like one behavior that we thread through this scheme. What's the O1 version of the behavior? What's the CRB1 version of the behavior? What's the CRB2 version of the behavior? And then what's generalization of that CRB2 in the client's life look like the O2 version of it? And we'll practice this the way we've done before. Maybe I'll role play it for a bit and then I'll have all of us work as a team and talk about what would rule two look like? What would rule three look like? What would rule four look like? What would rule five look like? So that's going to be the plan. Okay. Uh, Maria has been my support. Anything you want to add, Maria? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> see you on Tuesday. <laughs> Maria says see you on Tuesday. And I uh, hope you all have a good weekend and goodbye.